All right, so where we left it here is we were displaying the um, that information on screen. Uh, that's the whole point of this. Do you see uh, the concept that we're from the database, we're displaying all of those items on screen. Well, the uh, at the moment, um, we have image, but we haven't really set up a way to display the image uh, because we have no image. We don't have it set up in that um, we even can capture an image yet. So we're going to write the code for this, but we're going to keep it commented because if it tries to display an image that doesn't exist, we get a little broken icon. We haven't set up the way to capture an image yet. So we'll just write this as a comment on this to be determined area here. It's going to be very similar in that we need to target the next paragraph, but then it's going to be slightly different. So it's going to be, again, the, do the first of all, the dollar selector, but not .html. We'll do that in a moment. We're still targeting first the pound div view comics info. Um, P paragraph equals 6, or the seventh paragraph. But then the next level here is the child of this child, of this parent, is that there's an image. So space IMG. There's an image. Uh, there's an image tag inside of a paragraph inside of that div. That's basically what we're saying here. There's a paragraph, the sixth paragraph inside of this. So now the image inside of the seventh paragraph inside of the div. That's our selector. We're targeting what we're trying to trying to affect. And the difference here is that then we're saying dot attr attribute. Well, SRC is an attribute um, of image. So quotes SRC. We have source attribute, href attribute, ID attribute, so many attributes, right? So with dot attr, that's our method to, to read or write um, source. This would read what is in the source right now. I want to write into it. So another parameter here, comma, and this would be the name, this would be the path to the photo, success dot photo. We don't have a photo yet, so that'll be a broken link. Yes? Um, do you need the EQ after the ping colon? That would be a good idea. Mm -hmm. Equals. Yes. So paragraph equals the seventh paragraph then the child uh, image element attribute, which attribute? The source attribute. Set it to the path to the photo. So we'll say in the image, in the paragraph, in the div, set the source attribute to the image stored in the database in pouch currently non-existent so you see here this this selector is very powerful because we can we were targeting sort of like par <coughs> parent elements many times. Uh, and here we're drilling down deeper into the, the DOM, the, the, the whole structure of the document. There's an image inside of a paragraph, the seventh paragraph, in that div. It has an attribute source, which we set.
Okay, so... Okay, so um, this is then displaying the, the comic on screen. Let me just run it myself. I hadn't run it yet when I had all of these extra fields to display. Let me just confirm mine's working. Uh, barcode, has anyone run it? And what happens with barcode? Because we have no barcode. Does it say undefined or not? Yeah. Just blank. Okay, that's fine then. Um, so let me just run mine to see I don't have any errors. And then after that, we'll start to set ourselves up with those buttons, those buttons to delete and to edit. Remember this whole thing I started today saying, oh, I misspelled the Hulk. I want to edit that. Well, look at all of this that we've set up just to be able to view that info to then eventually edit that info. And again, hopefully this goes back to, to uh, remind you that uh, software is hard. And so give them a, a break when, the, when it doesn't quite work sometimes. You know, Don't go off and give them one star on the App Store right away. Make sure... Give them a chance, because we want that chance, too. And just run mine. It logs me in. I have a few comics. I wasn't really filling in the other stuff, so I'll fill it in a little bit more. I don't know. The blob. Number 99 from 1951 from Atlas. And uh, notes. Uh, scary comic. Save that. View that. So I've got a new one, the blob. Notice uh, alphabetically, uh, it should be also working there, that whole effort that we did a while ago about the comic, a comic, n comic. It's going to ignore the the, the uh, the an, and put it alphabetically this way. When we had dot all docs, we had that option of uh, all docs true, or whatever it was, something true, ascending. So we're automatically organizing the comic collection alphabetically. Uh, Amazing Heroes, Blob, Hulk, Spider-Man, and it's ignoring the the. If we hadn't done that extra work of that switch statement of the and an and such, it would have taken that T of the blob and used it to alphabetize it after Superman. And usually we don't see that. We see it alphabetized via blob or Hulk. So anyway, I click on the blob. Pops up here. So here's all the info that I typed. In my case, it's saying, uh, oh, I know why I didn't write it properly. I copied and pasted. Here's the thing about copying and pasting. When you copy and paste, make sure you copy and paste the right thing, right? So the name, the blob, that one's obviously the year, the publisher, and then I'm getting undefined under barcode. I'll oh, say number, which is because I didn't notice here that I copied all of these to say number. We've got name, number, that should have been year, publisher, note. Notes. Barcode. So I saw the I saw the information. I just Stop for a moment because I had named them visually to the user, all of them number, but the data was being displayed. Okay, so one more time. I'm going to show the blob. Pops up. Here we go. Name of the comic, The Blob, number 99. Year 1951, Publisher Atlas, notes, scary comic. Barcode undefined, we haven't scanned a barcode yet. Delete and edit don't work. Those have not been programmed yet. And I am getting this information appearing. I hadn't filled in anything for the other ones really, so I just get the, uh, the name, uh, the number and the year. But obviously I want to edit this one and add what I missed. We will set that up. 
very soon. We will need to take some time eventually to make this look nicer. I'd like to stretch it out to be a little bit more room and such. Uh, font looks okay, but eventually what I want to do is color some of these columns and make it look nice, like a little bit of a nicer table. Eventually I want to do what is known as zebra striping, which is that one row is a certain color, another row is another color, and the next row is the first color, so alternating colors. That's zebra striping. That'll be all through CSS. So we'll make the table look nicer later. But the data seems to be working. Um, the info and all of that pops up. The way uh, edit and delete will work depend on the particular comic in question. We saw here in View Comics Info, we're dealing with a particular comic. We, click, we clicked on a cell, and we've targeted a particular row. We've said, OK, this is the comic in question, ultimately. This comic has a data ID, which I've got in temp comic. Var temp comic is a local scope variable. It only exists inside of this function. I can't use temp comic in any other function. So what we're going to do is create a version that is a global scope variable to keep track of this. This is temporarily right here for the purposes of this function. I want to keep keep this in mind, keep it in memory also via a global scope variable. So that simply means defining a variable outside of a function, the global scope. Let's back up, let's back up to the part where we uh, have created other variables near the beginning of our pouch code. So at about line 190 or so, we've got the the database, global variable, we've got the L form save comic, etc., etc. Right here, we'll create a new one called temp comic to delete. This is our variable that we're going to use for deleting. Uh, also for editing, so maybe this name, we could think of a better name, but this variable here, it's not going to be set to anything at all just yet. We don't know which comic we're dealing with, so we're not setting it to anything. We're just creating this variable, this object that we can use throughout the whole app. We're not setting it to anything, but that's what we're going to use then now that we've determined which comic are we working with. So I'm making a note here, global scope variable to store a reference reference to the current comic in question. In our function uh, that we're dealing with today, we've determined which particular comic are we dealing with. So we're going to set this variable to that comic in question so that then we can use it in the delete button and the edit button and for other purposes. So temp comic to delete back go back all the way down, back to where we were working at, back to our view comics info. We've determined over here, temp comic is the ID of the comic in question. So based on that, that's how we're going to set it. <coughs> Thank you. 
after our db get. That's why there's that note there. End of dot get is where we have temp comic to delete is now set to temp comic. Set the temporary comic variable to the comic we've currently clicked on. So we know which one to delete, edit, etc. Because one function, its purpose is to uh, show the comic. Another function's purpose is to edit the comic. Another function's purpose is to uh, delete the comic. So we need to be able to pass uh, the right comic to the right function. And at the moment, temp comic only works and exists in this function. So we're kind of passing it back into the global scope here based on the one we've clicked on so that then we can delete this one or edit this one.